Welcome back, Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV, of course. You can see the man right there. He's the head football coach at Florida State University. Mike Norvile and I get a chance to catch up. Haven't done so, Coach, since the end of the season. First of all, welcome. Thanks for taking the time. And secondarily, um, you know, this was a 10-win season. Obviously, a lot of folks very excited, but I would guess, too, that uh, that was affirmation uh, for you and your staff that the leadership style that you've employed um, – Paid off without question. I guess I'm wondering is the question from where do you get your coaching tenets or philosophies? Whose voices do you hear in your head when you think about great coaches that you've learned from? You know, I've been, I've been fortunate. You know, I've been uh, I've been around the game of football since I was five years old. And, uh, you know, I've been around you know, so many great coaches, uh, you know, from when I was playing Pee Wee League football. Uh, you know, David Reese, who's, who still to this day comes to comes to our games and, and and cheers us on. I mean, you know, just those life lessons. You know, there's a lot of a lot of coaches that have poured into me, uh, a lot of experiences that I've you know had to go through on my own that uh, kind of help build the philosophy of, of what I want to a program to to look like and what I what I you know ultimately desire that I, that I think is the best way to to develop student athletes and and helping them on their journey to where they can achieve all their goals and dreams that they have and uh, so I mean there's 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 probably too many too many coaches to to name because I've taken you know bits and pieces from all of them but a lot of it is, is the the personal life experiences that I've had to go through and uh, we got a tremendous staff here we got great players you know when you find like minded individuals that are willing to to all uh, your work and pour into a, a common theme and a common goal. I mean, they have a chance to, to build something pretty special. And I think that's what we're, we're working through here at Florida state. Did you know early on you wanted to be a head coach? I know you've been around, you just said it since you were five years old, you've been a football player or coach and been around in some capacity. You love the game. You have a passion for the game that comes through. Did you know early on when your playing days were over, I want to strive to be a head coach? Uh, not, not necessarily. You know, I, I mean, I love the game. For me, it was all about relationships and, and a lot of those, um, those relationships that I had were with either position coaches or coordinators. And uh, yeah, that was, that was something that was big for me as a, as a player coming up, you know, obviously the head coach, the head coach position, um, you know, is one that, that oversees and implements the, the direction, the philosophies, you know, kind of the overall uh, makeup of a team. But uh, as a player coming up, I mean, that, uh, you know, I always, uh, I always kind of believed in in what that connection would be with you know whenever I got my opportunity to coach. So it wasn't well. I can't wait to become a head coach so I can do all these other things. That really kind of emerged as I got into the profession. And uh, you know, I was a position coach. I was able to move up and, and become a coordinator. And I really I really enjoyed that transition where there was an entire side of ball that uh, you know that I was responsible for. But you know, it, it never it. My, my role and my job never ended there. You know, there's whether it's defensive players or your know, offensive, it didn't, it didn't matter. Um, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to build relationships and you know, some of the, some of the great relationships I have were guys that I never, you know, even, you know, coached, you know, day in and day out, you know, maybe because they were at a different position or on the other side of the ball. And, uh, and then when I got the opportunity to become a head coach, I mean, it really, uh, you know, I enjoyed it more than what I thought I probably would. Um, you know, just the importance of every choice, the point of the decisions that are made uh, that are impacting lives, impacting lives of staff, impacting lives of, of you know, student athletes, you know, hoping kind of guide and set a, a vision for, you know, where we're going. And, uh, you yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I really, uh, you'll get a lot of satisfaction of is when you, you, you lay out a plan, um, you have seen you have seen people buy into that. And then, you know, just uh, all the experiences that come from it, you know, the good, the bad, you know, the response that uh, that needs to be that needs to be had through, throughout the journey. Uh, but I, I love that part of my job and uh, you know, I'm grateful to be able to, to do that. Well, on that note, I want to play a sound clip for you and then ask you a qu follow up question. Uh, you'll be able to hear it. And then I'll, I'll ask you um, uh, why it was you thought this coach. This is you earlier before the start of the season. You go through a process of, you know, I said when I came, when I came here, we're going to build this the right way, and we're going to we're going to build it in a way that's going to be able to to sustain because success is coming. I ultimately believe that. All right, part of that would be that you believe in what you're doing, you believe in yourself, and you believe in your players and coaches. But that's very specific to say it before the start of this season. Then obviously have a ten win season. What were the clues? What were the elements of things that maybe fans couldn't see that you see behind the scenes that suggested success was coming? Well, you know, it, it always comes down to the work, you know, the work, the relationships, um, you know, the the willingness for guys to to serve each other and to sacrifice, you know, you know uh, of sometimes their own personal ambition of what they wanted in the moment for the collective good of, of what the, the program needed. And, you know, some of the things that we had to had to go through and, uh, you know, I. 
I get to I get to be around these guys every day, and you know the staff that we have, you know the uh, the way that the way that our players responded, you know in time in tough times and in, in the challenging moments, the way that they you know embrace the relationships with each other. I mean, they, these guys care about you know each other, and I remember in our um, you know the very first press conference that we had before fall camp, you know I was asked you know a, a word to kind of describe this team of what I believed it was, and I said family, and that was. That's a that's a hard earned you know you know trait to be able to develop within a team and but when you have guys that are are willing to invest in each other they're willing to you know kind of you know break down some of the walls that uh, you know, sometimes go up and and just you know pour pour into uh, you know an experience together I mean it's that's what that's what makes this game special and you know it's the relationships that that have been built it was the uh, the work that it, that had been done and it continues to be done um, you know on a day in and day out basis not just on the field not just in the weight room but in the classroom in the community and, and these guys growing and pushing uh, to the standard that, that we want to operate here at Florida State and uh, so I was very confident what was and what was ahead and I'm very confident what's you know in our future as we continue to to progress and and uh, you know on our climb to, to ultimately where we all want to go I asked you uh, at one of the luncheons, Coach, uh, about the success that you and your staff have had mining the transfer portal. And uh, I'm wondering, I, I guess we all are, given that this is a fluid situation with NIL and portal efforts, and uh, they're all likely to shift in some capacity over time. What do you think is the right balance of, of building a roster through the high school ranks and the portal? And will that change year to year? How, how do you look at that moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think it's all reflective of your team and kind of where you are in the moment. You know, we don't, um, you know, we're not always, you know, aware of, you know, where what's going to happen with guys going, guys coming, you know, guys returning. Uh, you that's it's it's you know, year in year out, it's going to be a, a fluid situation. But uh, you know, you look at this team. Um, you know, I'll take one position. You know, we take the receiver position a year ago. We took four transfer receivers, uh, did not sign a high school player. Um, and, you know, obviously those guys that came in, you know, many of them had, had a great impact. Uh, you know, you know, obviously all of them had an impact of being a part of this this family. But, you know, with Winston's injury and, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you know that was that was something that we didn't didn't expect. But, um, you know, as you look at that year, that was what was needed. And it really built the comp the competition in a room, you know, it helped elevate guys that were returning on the roster. Uh, and now you look at this, this, this last signing class, we signed only high school receivers. We weren't, we weren't even looking to take a transfer uh, at the receiver position and not, not saying that there's, you know, you're always looking for the best fit to make your football team better, but it's also, you know, it's, it's where you are in the moment. And uh, you know, we were able to, so I think we end up signing 18, 19 high school players. We got nine transfers, you know, so, you know, you know, 66, 33, yeah, that kind of in that work, that percentage of, of your team, um, you know, that could change. And that, you know, as years progress, there might be years we might, you know, take, uh, you know, more transfers. We might take less transfers just depending on, you know, the needs that we have, the, the, what we have returning, you know, the, I think sometimes, you know, it's one thing to look at on the field, but it's also off the field, the leadership. I mean, I, I look yeah. back to, to Jermaine Johnson, you know, Kira Thomas, what they brought uh, from a leadership perspective to our football team and our defensive front there, uh, you know, a year ago, I mean, that was huge. And now you see guys that have grown in that and, you know, you know, Fabian Lovett, one of the best leaders we have on this team, you know, he got to be a part of that journey and, and to see that and see him carry that over. You know, there's a lot of guys within our, within our team that uh, benefited for who's come for who's come in, whether it's high school or transfer. So it's, I think each year is it's uh, its own unique, um, you know, kind of perspective to what we're going to go after. Nobody's had a chance to really ask you yet um, about the hiring of Patrick Sertan. Uh, Sertan, who, by the way, I remember as a player at Southern Miss and how good he was, and um, that's how old I am, remember his pro career. What was it about <laughs> him that stood out to you uh, when, when you made this hire? Well, you know, it, it always goes back to, to experiences with me. And, you know, I, I'm with any person that I bring into the program, uh, you know, I want I want men that are led from the heart. You know, that that obviously they care about the student athletes that are gonna that are gonna be willing to invest uh, in in helping them develop to the, to the men that they're gonna become. Yes, you have to be a teacher. Yes, you have to have that knowledge. You, you all the 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 things that are surrounding you, being able to go out there and execute and do a job to the highest level. But um, you know, it, it went back it went back to our our personal experience together. I mean, I talked to him. I you know we had some some. Uh, you know, mutual, you know, friends and relationships within the profession um, before I ever came to Florida State. 
But then, you know, you know, even in those first couple of weeks of having a job, uh, you know, I went down to American Heritage and got a chance to see him, uh, you know, just, you know, who he is and the, the personality, the, the, the man, the leader, uh, you know, the way that he's the way that he's coached. You know, he's been around you know, very talented young men that he's brought together and, you know, you know have has done at the high school level what you know, we're, we're aspiring to do you know, here at Florida State and, and being able to to push to to compete for championships year in and year out to be able to develop guys and, and preparing them for their next steps. And, you know, Pat's done it. He's done it as a player. Um, you know, you know, unbelievable career, you know, the journey that he had, the, the longevity, the success, um, but also who he was throughout that throughout that process. And then you see that, uh, you know, as a father, you know, what he's done with his own un, own son and helping guide him to the path to now being one of the best defensive backs in, in uh, the National Football League. And then obviously as a coach. And, you know, I wasn't I wasn't certain that, uh, you know, of, of what you know, what his interest level would be. But he was definitely a guy that, uh, um, you know, that I wanted to talk to. And, uh, you know, after the fir- first phone conversation we had, just hearing his heart, uh, his passion, the, the, the desire to make that type of impact on young men and and you know, obviously the knowledge and the, and the teacher that he is. I mean, it was, a, it was an absolute home run for us and just grateful to, to have him here and a part of this program. Yeah, I can imagine, Coach, uh, that, you know, there was a long line of people. One thing that a 10-win season will do is is probably broaden the scope of guys that you can talk to about joining a staff that's on the way up and success is happening. Uh, I imagine a lot of people did want this job. Was it important? You mentioned American Heritage. Was there any aspect of this hire that was important uh, in relevance to the ability to recruit South Florida? I mean, you know, absolutely. You look at all you look at all factors when you're when you're you know, bringing personnel in and hiring positions. Um, you know, you, you think about the impact, and uh, you know, obviously the the on the field impact, the day to day impact within or within you know, this this building, you know, with the with the student athletes, but also the opportunity to to you know, gain. Um, you know, relationships and familiarity within a certain area. And, you know, the, the importance of South Florida, uh, you know, is critical here. And, uh, you know, we've got some great players, uh, you know, from, from South Florida through the last few years. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously Coach Sertan has a, has a tremendous reputation and, uh, you know, great relationships, uh, you know, there. And it was something that was just, you know, absolutely the right fit for us in every in every way for what we wanted to be able to bring into the program and uh, just excited to have them. Coach, I know you've got obligations regimented as always. I'll let you go on this note. Maybe you'll humor me. Do we know the first day of spring practice? <laughs> uh, first day of spring practice will be March 6th. And so ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> that'll be uh, there, there. There's uh, the, and then, you know, obviously we have a, we have a good schedule that's laid out. I'm sure that'll be, uh, uh, be, be getting pushed out here soon, but uh, yeah. you know, we're excited about uh, the, the the practices that we have. Uh, really pleased with the work that our players have uh, have already poured in. You know, we started back uh, you know, the first week of school, and uh, you're seeing the 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 edge and desire of how they're how they're approaching the work is really impressive. And guys that have been here for years, and and you know, obviously we've got I think it's 18 or 19 newcomers that, that started here in January, and just the the way that they've already uh, meshed within the program. I know you guys have talked to, to, to I think all of the newcomers, but I mean, we got great young men, and uh, you know the leadership of the of the guys that are returning have really uh, you know it's been it's been a a fun fun journey for the first month of this semester, and we're excited about uh, you know, that continuing with our tour of duty workouts, and uh, you know obviously all things leading up to uh, to spring practice and and going to get after it uh, you know here for the rest of the semester. Competition should be fierce. A lot of fun to cover. Thanks, Coach, for your time. As always, I appreciate it. Be well, sir, until we talk again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, and go Knowles. Yep, take care. It's Mike Norvell, the head football coach at Florida State University. We'll come back and react to that momentarily on the Jeff Cambridge Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV.